Hey folks, Jeremy here. So I've been asked to do a breakdown of the, the fog pass that I've used for the Rustic Cabin Challenge. And since I'm at it, I figured I might as well do a full scale kind of tutorial on it and, and get it out there. So in case anybody else has interest in it, they might find some of this useful. So I'm going to go start to finish. Um, I, I deleted the fog out of my scene. We'll just kind of recreate it and, and go from there. So this is kind of my end goal here is to have a pass that looks like this that we can composite over the beauty um, in post and not have to re-render it every time we render and tank our render times. Um, and then to take it a step further, uh, we're able to, and RenderMan makes it real easy to, so this is our full pass in comp, to isolate the light sources so I can come here in comp or in post and you know adjust the contributions of the fog per light source which is really neat and provides a lot of flexibility I don't have to go tweaking the fog in the scene and re-rendering I can do this all all in post which is which is awesome so um, I'll walk you through that and we'll set that up um, as well so let's go into Maya so this is my scene. I've deleted most of the stuff in here just for the purposes of this uh, breakthrough. We don't need to re-render all the various assets. And I've also deleted the fog and all the render passes as well. So we're, we're a clean slate. We're going to go start to finish on this um, to get the fog rendered. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a volume primitive. I'm going to use a cube because it kind of fits this space a little better than the other options. We're going to scale this up just to encompass our area. This is what the fog is going to be contained within. Position it there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the tighter the better. Otherwise you're rendering fog outside of your space that is a waste. So I'm just going to position that around there. Looks good to me. So we've got a fog primitive and I'm going to assign a PXR volume. Uh, if I can type it correctly, PXR volume surface to it to shade it. So Um, sorry, force of habit to, to name these things appropriately. So I didn't do anything too complex here. Um, literally left it defaults. I didn't, I didn't enable multiple scattering or anything like that. I just adjusted the density float to get, uh, what we need. So, uh, I, I know some of you mentioned this on the threads, um, uh, but the, the, precision on this input field gets truncated. So the value I use for my scene is 0 0.0003. If you were to enter that in, it gets truncated. Now, I, I think it still accepts that value and renders it appropriately, but you don't know what it is. Say I were to come back tomorrow, I wouldn't know what I set it to because I forgot. So what I'd do is do a, a Maya node, multiply divide, um, and I just need one value. If I want that same 0 0.0003, I'm just going to do a little multiply of 0 0.01 times 0 0.03 gives me 0 0.0003. So I'm going to take the output um, x, because that's the the one I set in, and plug that into density float. Um, that way you you can come back and actually see with precision um, the values you set it to. Uh, so that literally is all the shading that I did. I mean, you, you can get complex with this. You can do density, you know, and world scale, do it thick, you know, thicker toward the bottom or et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you can go crazy. I left it basic because it's a kind of a subtle thing in my scene. So I'm going to select the fog and assign it. Boom. So we've uh, created and assigned a, a shader to our fog. However, if we were to render it now, it's it's going to be baked into the beauty. It's going to be baked into the render. So we don't get that flexibility in post to adjust it. So that's where we need to create a render layer to render this out separately. So uh, the 
next step for that, I'm going to open up Maya's render render setup here. Uh, and again, I have no layers currently, so let's just create that. So I'm going to do a fog layer. And um, within that fog layer, we're going to have a few collections. So I'm going to start by doing uh, the fog volume geo. So with this, I'm going to just add my fog. And basically, that's, that's going to be... Um, kind of left as is. Uh, typically, what I like to do is hide this. So in my beauty renders, that's not visible. And then when it comes to the fog layer, I um, create a visibility um, override on it on the per fog basis or per layer basis rather. So I think that's this one. So you can middle click and drag and attribute anything over onto a layer and drag it here and an absolute override of visibility. So uh, check that on. So for the fog layer, the fog will be visible. And for the beauty or the master layer, uh, it won't be. It'll be hidden, which is what we want. That's great. So um, let's switch over to my fog layer right now so we don't have any so we just have the fog so um then we're going to go through and create a few more collections uh this collection is going to be the geometry in the room that we want um to kind of cut out the fog and and have the fog be around so this is going to be our fog room geo and this we're just going to be adding basically everything else in the scene that might contribute or cut out the fog. Um, so it's going to be our entire cabin, grandma's armchair, walls, picture frames, pretty much all the geometry, um, everything. I'm going to add all that. I'm going to do the ribs, rib archives separately. I left a few rib archives in here intentionally so I can kind of show you a caveat there. I'll, I'll create a new collection for that. Um, but again, we don't want the the geometry in our scene to be rendered um, normally like it would be in the beauty pass. So what we want to do is do a material override. So in this layer, these objects are rendering as a black, just a matte black. So what I'm going to do here is come in here and create a BXR constant as black. So this is not going to contribute any specular, any diffuse. It's just going to be straight flat black. So I'm going to call this um, black um, surface override. Again, force a habit. Got to name these things. And we're going to create a, on this collection that we have all of our geometry, we're going to right click it and do create material override. So material override, and this is where you can um, uh, put input, whatever, whatever shader you want to override and assign to this geometry in this pass. So I believe, um, if I can just drag this over, it looks like it's working. It's thinking, so it might take a second because it's got to iterate through all the geometry and assign this material. So um, give it some patience. I'm just going to pause it until it's done here. All right, so we've got our black surface override shading group as our material override for this, all this geometry. Now, the reason why I separated this fog volume out is because I don't want this fog um, primitive to be overridden. So it's got to be in a separate collection that doesn't get that override. So, um, so that's good. We've got the geometry there. Now we need our lights, the lights that we want to contribute to the fog. So we're going to do a, another collection, fog lights. Now here's all the lights that I have in my scene. Um, I'm just going to add all of them. So this is where you can 
kind of isolate, say you don't want this particular light source to be contributing to your fog, you can remove it from the collection and it just won't won't be there, won't be in this layer. But uh, I, I need all my lights to be in here and contrib contributing. So that's the, the fog light collection. Um, so if we were to render this now as is, um, and I might do that actually, I'm going to hit a render and then probably hit pa and pause the recording uh, and I'll show you what we get. So let's do that. I'm going to render this out and um, I'll, I'll replay or I'll resume when this is done. All right, so I let the sample out for a minute and you can see even though I didn't include the ribs in this render pass, they decided to render anyway. But um, case in point here is the rib archives, should you be using them, and if you're not, great, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, they don't receive material overrides, um, especially if you've baked in the, the look file within the rib, uh, which is what I did here. So um, we still want them to be rendered black and, and contribute to our past. So you can see here the, the prayer flags, um, the trees, the ivy, and there's some various other plants that I used as rib archives. Basically, I set them up in a different scene and shaded them and then exported them as archives and then imported them into this scene as um, rib archives so it just it's a it's something i like to do just to keep my scene lighter so it, it doesn't have to create the rib file and, and shade these assets here in the scene so how do we deal with those um, and again if you're not using ribs great that this this setup right here is probably all you need to do to get a, a legit fog pass so, but just in the case you are using a rib file, um, this is how I overcame it. I don't know how it's supposed to be done, but it worked for me. Uh, I didn't find any documentation on it, but this is what worked. So what I did was created another collection here, and this is uh, the fog rib, and then all of my rib files I've grouped together in one folder to make it easy. So you can see these are the rib files in my scene. So I've got the trees. My marking menu wants to go away for me. I've got the trees, some vines, and the flags, etc. So obviously we still want them in our fog pass. The fog needs to be cut out by these uh, um, objects. So I've added them to the layer now. And what we need to do and this is just through trial and error what I figured out. So let's just select one of the rib files. Um, we need to basically turn the, I never remember which one, do a few overrides here. So we're going to do the primary visibility of the actual rib off. So that is going to be off. So that means it's not going to render the look file that I've created in my separate scene and, and that I use in the beauty. That's going to be disabled. And what I do need to do is create um, using the GPU cache that I exported. So um, taking a few steps back, when I, when I exported the rib file from a separate scene, I also exported an Alembic cache with it. So in this method, I can pull in the rib and then preview it with the Alembic cache in the scene. Um, but you can also have some additional functionality with the cache, like overriding it with a dynamic rule. You can override the materials that are assigned to it. So that's what I'm doing here. So basically what I just did um, in this override is turned off the rib uh, using the look file. We don't want that. And then I'm going to also create an absolute override for visible layer, render a limit cache. So this is the viz shape GPU cache object for, for one of these rib files. Um, and for that, I'm going to check that on. Um, and I actually didn't want to do it that way. Uh, I think I can, I wanted to do this a different way. Basically, I want to come here and drag this over and make it a global override. If I do it that way, what I just did, um, it'll override just this rib. Um, so I'm going to delete the one I just did. So um, to reiterate, let me just take a few steps back because that was a little confusing. 
I'm going to drag over on my rib collection render limbic cache. And that's going to create an absolute override for all of the objects within this collection. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to check that on. All right, so now we're rendering the GPU cache instead of the rib with the look file. So we want to assign that same black constant material to these GPU Alembic caches. Um, so how do we do that? Renderman provides a tool, the dynamic rules editor, that we can come in here and assign materials to these caches at render time on the fly. It's very convenient. So I'm going to create a new rule. Um, this is going to be this field, and I wish there was a little description on what it is, but um, in the docs, I think there are. I'm going to create black surface override shading group. So that's the shading group I created as the material override. So we want that same material applied. Uh, and then for this, we want every cache in the scene, which is annotated by this slash star star slash star and, and this of course you can isolate various objects but i want everything in this right so if i do that uh, and it's enabled when i render again and, and i will do that now actually uh, i'll render again and i'll show you that our rib archives are now rendering with a black surface override, which is exactly what you want. So let me hit render again, pause it, and I'll show you what we come up with. All right, so we've got the render sampled a bit, um, and it looks exactly what we want. Everything's, all the objects are, are black, and then we got our fog. So uh, this is, in essence, a, a fog pass that you could right away just merge over your beauty pass and you get good results obviously i didn't let it sample out but um you get the point this this is looking good uh, if we look at say our alpha we still get our, our good alpha um, cutouts out the window that kind of thing um but like i mentioned earlier i, I, I think it's it's beneficial if you have the flexibility to isolate the light sources in post and kind of uh be able to, to color correct on whatever the, the different uh, light passes in post. So right now, if, if this is the stage you wanted to be at and just have one single image to comp over, this is great. This is probably your final product, your final setup, which is, which is awesome. So uh, the next step I'm going to do is show you how to isolate the light sources, uh, and then it'll render out the separate um, light sources as different EXRs when you do your batch render. So um, to do that, and this this is the same workflow for the beauty pass as well. So you, once you set this up, you're going to get these separate um, per light um, breakouts, you know, for your beauty, for your for your dust pass, for your fog pass. It, it's it's useful across all the different passes. So what to do? Um, is to set up light groups on your light sources and then in the um, render settings I can show you how to hook those up so depending on how I mean just it's really up to you up to the artist to determine what you want to break out and what you want to isolate um, for me I did um, the skylight as um, its own light group so uh, to, to start off so it any light source, select one of them. Uh, if you come down to Render Man tab, now you don't come down to Render Man tab. Um, am I on the wrong? I thought it was on that. I thought it was on the light. Light group. Okay. It's under the advanced. Couldn't find it. Um, so you come under, so you select a light, come under the advanced tab, you get a light group. Here you type in any identifier you want. Um, a sky LG just for me indicates light group um, and you can assign the same value to multiple lights to group them all in the same group so for me I did this sky um, as one and because I'm using portal lights in all the openings of the room I assigned the same light group to the sky dome light that I'm using and all the, the portal lights. You can see it's all the same group. So that means um, all these lights are going to be
be broken out um, in post and they're not going to be able to be isolated individually. But that's fine. That's what I wanted. Uh, we've got the sun. Sunlight group. We've got a few fill lights that I isolated into different light groups as well. Sun fill one light group. Sun fill light group. So again, this is up to the artist. up to you. Do you want every single light broken out or do you want just groups of you know similar contribution so I went through and assigned light groups to all of my different lights I'm uh, just using this and in the render settings I come up here to the AOVs what you can do here is so by default you're gonna have a beauty with your color and your alpha so what I did is I created several different beauty passes here so these are manually created. Um, what you do is say, I would like to start off a new pass. I'm just going to do a color pass, uh, create new node. Nope, that's not how you do it. So that's not what I wanted to do. I hit the plus button. That's what you do. So you hit the plus button to create a new pass. Uh, I'm going to call it whatever. And again, I've already set these all up, so that I'm just demonstrating this here. So say I do just whatever, sunlight fill. I, I denote them by beauty and then whatever light group I'm using. So do that. And now it's empty. And it sorted it. So there's no actual... Um, channels that I've added so I'm going to do a color so make sure this is selected CI is your color you can just drag it over use existing and it'll add that to your your pass and then an alpha same thing drag it over or uh, pop it over there so you'll get um, a new pass with a color and an alpha. But how do we hook up the light pass? So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your color, and I guess your alpha as well, and there's an LPE light group drop down. Now this is new in RenderMan 22, so it makes it really nice. You can just do a drop down, and it automatically recognizes all the light groups that you've created. So super quick and easy. Just select whatever light group, and that's what's going to render out. So um, that's that. I went through and did that um, for um, all of my different light groups, the door fill, lantern, light fill, etc. Side fill, side fill one. Just do that for all of your different light groups. And that's it. Basically, when you render, you do a batch render, you're going to get all these different passes for free along with your beauty. Obviously, if you if you keep this main beauty active, you're going to get your main beauty pass and then a breakdown of all your different light sources. And if you say were to add these all together, a plus in post, you'd actually come out, it'd be the same thing as your beauty. So that's what I did there. Um, hit a render and um, I'm not going to sit through a, a, a new render. So I'm just going to pull up the my comp. So this is in Fusion. So say we have um, I'm just gonna go into this, my fog. So here's all my different fog. This is for my actual render. So I've got um, my main filtered beauty, and then I have all these different fog passes. So what I can do here is just click and drag all of them in and then fusion is cool because it just does it automatically emerge on them um, and then you can come in here and see and I, I went through on this side is, is what I did the same thing but so just to demonstrate you can drag and drop and it'll merge them all together but so I've set it up already over here so if I were to do basically just a merge these are just pluses all the way down and displayed them this is what we get this is our fog pass uh, it's got a alpha like we need and um, it looks it looks good and then the great thing about this is say I turn off 
most of these. Uh, the lantern wasn't even on, so that's fine. So say the side fill fog, that's what we're seeing now. You can hook up a brightness color correct and we can you know dial in and change the different fogs contributions which is great so um, I just merged that over my beauty so if I were to say look at my beauty you can come in here and say my sun fill fog I want brighter or something you know and that's the beauty of color correcting and, and posts you can have ultimate flexibility and not go back to render. The door feels very subtle. Um, the sun, say, want a pretty powerful beam on this beautiful orange tabby cat. You can do that, etc. So, anyway, I think that kind of concludes what I was going to show you. Um, this is how I used it in post how I rendered it out, how I set it up in Maya. It's a pretty simple setup. RenderMan's made it pretty streamlined to, to set these things up. Um, and anyway, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, you can comment on the video below or just ping me. Um, I'll be happy to help. Anyway, thanks again. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys later.